Now that we've gone over the foundation of Final Cut Pro 10, let's get into the core of it all, the edit. In this lesson, we're going to go over the timeline, getting deeper into the timeline basics, like storyline, magnetic timeline, navigation, timeline tools, connected clips, compound clips, and lastly, gap clips. Let's take a look. You'll find that working within the Final Cut Pro 10 timeline is quite different than other nonlinear editors. And if you haven't used other nonlinear editors, well, let's take a look at really how they work and what it all is doing. So the basics of the timeline is all built around the primary storyline. The primary storyline is the vein of your edit. It's the foundation. Visually in the timeline, it's this main track right in the middle. It is notated by the dark gray line versus the light gray up and below it. And all timelines have a primary storyline. So you have whatever you're building off of. If you are within your timeline, wherever your playhead is, is what you'll be seeing in your viewer. Here you can see that I'm going up and below here from my primary storyline to another storyline, and it's showing me only what's in the storyline here or what's in the primary storyline here. If I go up and I actually move the playhead, though, it'll show me both of them as they are composited together. Now, storylines are just a sequence of clips, so be it your primary or your secondary is just a place to group things. So you can group cutaways, titles, you can even group sound effects and music as a secondary storyline. Next, let's take a look at connected clips. Connected clips are attached to clips in the primary storyline in the timeline. They're useful for cutaways, shots, composited images, and sound effects. Connected clips remain attached and synchronized until you explicitly move or remove them. A sequence of connected clips is a storyline. Now let's take a look look at a connected clip, what they look like, and then how they move together. And lastly, we'll cover how to move the actual connection point, which is something you'll probably need to do on a common occurrence. So let's take a look. We'll just grab a clip here from our favorites. Um, let's see here. Maybe we'll grab uh, this shot here. There's not much going on with it. So we're going to grab this clip and we're going to bring it down. And it's a connected clip because you can see there's a little connection point right where the two connect. And the other way to tell is that it's stacked here on the primary storyline. So this goes, you know, and you can move it anywhere you'd like, and it can be a cutaway. So say I needed a cutaway to this shot and then cut back. I can, I can have that here. And the thing is, though, is that they actually stay with whatever they're connected to if you move that main file within your primary storyline. So let's take a look at that. If I move the primary storyline, the connected clip moves along with it. And every time I move it, it'll go and be connected to it. So if I have like a sequence that I've made, but I just want to move it somewhere else in the edit, they'll actually move together. And that's really helpful. So what if I wanted to change the connection point of my connection clip? There might be a lot of different needs for this, but it's really this connection point that's right here. What if I didn't want these three clips to be connected, but rather I wanted this clip to be connected to this clip because it was this clip that triggered my need for the B-roll. What if I'd edited this and it'd been over here, so I did the timing, but then I wanted to change the way it all worked. Well, the connection point is still with this clip so I can still move those together. You might want to write this down because it's something that you'll probably have to look up dozens of times. So write it down on like a, a sticky note of some sort and stick it next to your monitor because you will get frustrated with this if you have been editing and you need to move that point. Instead of going having to look it up again, just write it down and it's command option click. So command option click, and I click on the top of the clip that I wanna change the connection point to where I want the connection point to be. So right now you can see the playhead is right there with my cursor, and if I press command option click, there it moves it. And see, I can move it wherever I'd like, but I wanna move it to here. So now, these two clips are connected. And it's real simple, real easy, but you will definitely run into this issue from time to time, so write it down. Now let's look over compound clips. The idea of a compound clip is that I have a storyline here and I wanna group them together so that I can affect them together either by changing their size or maybe colorizing them or doing something. Maybe I'm going to a dream sequence and this is gonna be the dream sequence together, but I wanna cut away to it. What I can do is if I highlight both my clips and you can do a keyboard shortcut of Option G or you can right click on it and go Noob Compound Clip or you can press control click and you go to new compound clip. So let's do option G. So highlight them both, option G. And now it wants me to name this compound clip. So um, let's call it uh, compound, I gotta spell it right, clip. 
example one. I'm going to go OK. And so now you see it's actually one piece of video. So if I wanted to then change the connection point of this compound clip, I can do it the same way. So now I'm connected here. Those two are connected there. And then I can choose it here and they'll actually be moved to that clip. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So what this actually is doing is creating another storyline that you can then go into by double clicking on the actual compound itself that is going to make the video that you have as a connected clip, but now it's going to have its own primary storyline. So let's double click and take a look at that. I double click on it and now you can see primary storyline, secondary storyline. I can organize this just like it's a whole separate edit. And then once I am done with my sequence of what I'm doing, I can go back into my main project and go back. So you can see this is my project name, compound clip example one. And if I just go back, it now has it here. It'd be very helpful if I want to resize my compound clip or whatever I'm doing so that I can now manipulate it as a whole instead of a bunch of separate videos. One last thing to add is that compound clips can be made up of video, audio, and titles, or really whatever asset you need to use. They work just like your primary timeline. They're just grouped together. Now let's talk about gap clips. You might find yourself with a situation where you're trying to show a cut and you want to dip to black. You want it to be on black because you're going to have some titles there. Maybe it's for some kind of movie trailer or what have you that you're creating some drama with. And then you want to go back to video. Now, so far we have the magnetic timeline. And if I grab a clip and I bring it to the end, here, it's just going to snap right to the back end of it. But say I wanted to go to black and then I want to go back to my video. What do I do? It's called a gap clip and it's a blank clip, also known as a slug or mat or color mat, depending on what nonlinear editor you're working on, and they have no sound. All you need to do to insert a gap clip is to go into your position tool. If we go to our little toolbox here, we can go down to position or we can hit our keyboard shortcut P and you can see it's an arrow without the handle there. All I have to do now is I can grab this clip. If I bring it back a little bit, now a gap clip has been created and that will be in any length you want. So if I bring this clip way back here, it'll make the gap clip an actual clip. You can adjust, you can edit and whatnot. It will go along with you. So I want to shorten it or I want to make it longer. You can do all of those things. One thing to pay attention whenever you're using the position tool is because it looks so much like the select tool, you might find yourself moving stuff around while still using that tool. So make sure you press A to get back to your select tool because if you don't, you'll be adding gap clips just about everywhere and it's frustrating. So just make sure to go back to your select tool so that you don't have any unwanted or unneeded gap clips. Another thing we'd like to cover is the timeline index. Timeline index will help you find specific clips and markers within your timeline and it'll also help you find keywords. So if you just come down here to the bottom left, you click on this button here and your timeline index will open up. And I had been searching for a gap clip and see there it actually shows you the gap clip. And if you click on it, it'll highlight it in white so you can find it quickly. And if this was a really complicated edit, it would help you find things. This is a 20 second edit, so it's not necessarily the hardest thing to navigate, but it'll help you find when you're doing a real complex edit where you have lots and lots of parts and aspects to your edit, and you'll just be able to get right to them really quickly. Now we've already talked about it a little bit, but let's dive in deeper to the magnetic timeline. The magnetic timeline automatically tracks clip relationships as you rearrange, trim, and add clips. It lets you easily make changes in even the most complex sequences. So let's take a look at it in action. It's really quite simple. It's just like things are attracted by magnetism. They just snap right to each other. So that's really cool if you just want to arrange things really quickly. If you've spent a lot of time organizing, you have your favorites full of all your clips trimmed the way you want them. You can just now put them in order and they're going to magnetically clip to each other and it's just going to make it for a quick edit. The magnetic timeline is affecting clips within the storyline, the main primary storyline, and the clips outside of the storyline, everywhere magnetism is happening. There are two ways to delete clips to invoke or ignore magnetism. So let's, let's take a look at the first way, which is if you just delete a clip between two clips, the outside clips are going to now go together like a magnet. Let me get rid of this clip here. And if I press delete, you'll see that boom, the outside clip comes and meets with the clip just prior to the one that I deleted. Say that's not what you wanted to do. Instead, you want to keep that timing, but you want to have a placeholder or just to keep the edit you want, or maybe you want to make sure that the connected clips that are there are there instead. 
you can then, if you press shift and backspace at the same time, it's gonna put a gap clip between those two clips and the timing is gonna stay as designed. Let's look at how to navigate the size of your timeline. So if you'd like to get in close to a place for an edit and get into the frames, you can do that. Or if you just wanna look at one little area, say your timeline is an hour long, you just wanna look at five minutes or what have you, the way you can zoom in and zoom out and then fit to zoom. So first let's take a look at how to zoom in and out. There's a tool that is called the zoom tool and it looks like a magnifying glass. You can also get it with a keyboard shortcut Z. And what it does is you can either draw an area that you want it to zoom. So if you want to get into just this little area to do a tighter edit or get in there frame by frame and really perfect it, you can do that. And when you get closer as well, just any given point, you can click and get closer. As well, you can use Command Plus and Command Minus to zoom in if you're just doing keyboard shortcuts and you don't want to change tools. If you press Option and click, you will zoom out. And that'll be nice because you want to get it into a certain view or you just want to get out, zoom in, zoom out. You're not necessarily drawing a space that you want to go to. You're just in the edit and really focusing. Another nice keyboard shortcut to use is Zoom to Fit. And if you press Shift and Z, it will zoom in to just your active timeline area so that you don't have any empty space. If I am zoomed out here, so it's showing me about a minute and I wanna fit just to my active timeline, shift Z and it gets it done. Now next is a thing called snapping. Now I'm gonna change my tool. I'm gonna to press A and get back to my arrow or select tool. And I wanna show you how snapping works. So snapping, if you see my cursor, the playhead that's connected to my cursor is going right along and it keeps it up with that line. But as soon as I get close to an edge, it snaps it and see it also changes the color there, but it jumps from and goes right to that cut. That can be a pain if you're trying to do things that are off timing from cuts. So turning on and off snapping is helpful. The N key is your keyboard shortcut and you can turn that on and off. And you can see over here on the corner of your timeline that the light as it turns on and off will turn blue. So this button will turn blue when it's on and turning off, on, off, on. So real easy, turn on and off, and you can also click on that icon to turn it on and off. Now the next thing that you can turn on and off in the same menu is skimming. Now skimming is tied to audio skimming, so right now it's just got video skimming on, but I can turn audio skimming on as well. And if I come up to my clips here, both the video and the audio skim. Now if I go back down to that menu and I turn off just skimming in general, it will turn them both off. So you can have just video if you want, which is turning off audio skimming and have skimming on. You can then have audio skimming on and both of them on. So it's skimming both video and audio. And to turn skimming on and off is S and turning audio skimming on is shift S. Let's turn that off because I find it a little bit annoying only when I'm just trying to do an edit. But if I'm up in my clip menu, it's actually really nice to have on. So let's turn that on, but I'm gonna turn audio skimming off because that actually is a little bit more pleasant. Let's finish up with some keyboard shortcuts of some small actions that you might want to use. So first, right off the bat is soloing. Now, if you just press option and S, it will turn on and off soloing and it'll solo whatever you're clicked on. So right now I'm clicked on this video clip of me on a zip line. And if I hold option S, it will turn it on or it'll turn on this button over here on the top right of your timeline. And you can see that it grays everything else out. So it's just soloing this one video. So it's whatever you're highlighted on, it will solo. I might be doing this because I really want to get the audio right and the music underneath it was distracting and I don't want to hear it, but I don't want to like turn it off or disable it or anything like that. I can just solo and now I can watch just this clip. <laughs> just by itself. Now it'll play other things, but I'm just hearing just that. Next, if you want to go in and out of frames, let's turn off soloing and you can go between frames. If you wanna go forward a frame, you press the forward key. And if you wanna go back with the backwards key, if you press the J key, it'll play backwards. And every time you press it, it'll actually get faster. The K button will pause. So if I'm going forward, just press space bar and I press K, it'll pause. And then if I press L, it'll move forward just like J did backwards. So every time I press it, it'll go faster. So there you go, very fast. Now, lastly, this is a really helpful tool just when you're trying to really get in and make sure your edit is 
just absolutely perfect. If you want to nudge your clip one frame back or one frame forward, use the comma and period. Comma will go backwards in time and period will go forward in time. So backward or forward. And it will just adjust that clip and move it in time the whole thing. One forward, one back, or how many times you press it. And lastly, if you want to change your timeline time, you just click on it until it changes like that. You type in your time code. So I want to go to five seconds and bam, it goes there. And that concludes working in the timeline. In our next segment, we're going to be covering trimming tools and editing types.